So previously, what we did in our game, if we take a look at the our game, our room was small like this. And how we made the game look like we kept flying was the planes would jump uh, back into a position. And we used a controller enemy with multiple alarms that when they would ring, they would bring another uh, enemy on the screen. So for example, when alarm two rings, uh, an enemy uh, three would come on. Um, and that's fine to get a sort of a random game, but a better way to do this game is using the view variable. And so there's a variable, just like the other variables that we've used in the game, we've got uh, X, Y, and that sort of thing. There's a built-in variable called view underscore uh, Y view. And this variable indicates the top position of the first view in the room. And so what I can do, that probably didn't make a lot of sense to you, but let me uh, show you in the room here and hopefully this will make a little bit more sense. In the room, <coughs> excuse me, I can um, tell the room to have a height uh, that's much larger. So maybe 4,800, 10 times larger. So I've got a room that is much, much larger. And what I could do is I could take my um, object of my plane and I can put the plane maybe down right here at the bottom. And I can take enemies and place enemies in strategic uh, places and even sort of do some flying formations, which can uh, kind of seem fun uh, for a game. And so what's going to happen is instead of the game um, or it looking like the screen is going down, the views are going to make what we see on the screen, the view is going to just keep going up, up, up. So how do we do that? Well, first I need to go to background and I need to get rid of the vertical speed of the background. So the background is no longer going to rotate. The next thing I need to do is I need to click on the view tab and on the view tab, I need to uh, say, enable the use of views. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use view zero in this room here. And um, what's gonna happen is when the game starts, um, we're going to view on the room um, at the position, um, right here, zero for X and 4320, which is 4,800 minus 480, uh, so that we view um, when the room starts, the bottom part of this room here that I made. So I put here 4320 and I say visible when the room starts. And you'll see, I don't know if you can see or not, but there's a little, uh, small little line here that um, shows what is actually visible on the screen. So on the screen, it's going to start off and we're going to start down here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to manually, it's going to take a little bit of time, but I'm manually going to put a island right here and then maybe another island right there and another island we fly over right here. And that same island, uh, maybe there's going to be uh, three of them um, or two of them and maybe I'll put some other islands as well uh, on here um, and there might be sections where there's no island so it'll even uh, seem more random I'm also going to introduce some different uh, planes so again um, I might have a whole line of and I'm going quick here of this enemy and then I might have a whole line of uh, this enemy. I might start introducing this enemy and so forth. And so what this does is it allows the player to kind of uh, learn to play and come and discover what's going to be next and next and next. So how am I going to get the room to move this view? That's the next thing. So I need to go to the game controller. And in the game controller, in the step event... What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the variable view underscore y view, and that's the built-in variable that shows me my view, and I'm going to say 
take two off it. Okay, so in the step event, um, our variable y variable is going to be relative to less. So it's going to get less and less and less. And then finally, um, just like the game ends right here, I'm going to copy what happens when the game ends. It's going to sleep and show the highest scoreboard and then restart the game. And I want to copy that and put that also in the step event if, and so I'll take the test variable, if view underscore y view equals zero, then what I want to do is I want to do all, whoops, uh, sleep, show the high score, and the game is over. This also would allow me to put a boss or some sort of hard challenges at the very end. Now, the controller enemy that I had, and a lot of students sort of had issues with making controller enemy, where we had a whole slew of different alarms that would ring at different times and introduce different uh, things, I no longer am going to need it. So I can take uh, right here, I can take the controller enemy and I can right click and get rid of it. I still need the game controller because the game controller, of course, is going to move the screen. And I'm also going to need to reposition in the draw event where things are drawing. I want the scoreboard, for example, to move with the screen. So I don't want it to be a Y uh, 404. Rather, I want it to be at view underscore Y view. So what's viewed on the screen <laughs> plus. So Y is going to be a dynamic Y. It's always going to change. As the view changes, so is this uh, going to need to change. So things like the scoreboard, I need to uh, modify by using the view variable, view underscore y view, what we see in the screen. Um, and then we're gonna add 404, that's where it's gonna be. And same with where I'm gonna draw the score, it's gonna be view underscore y view plus 440. And then where I display the health bar, the y is gonna be view underscore y view uh, plus 449 and the y2 is going to be the view underscore y view plus 459 and then finally where I draw the lives um, x is going to be the same because the, we're, left and right we're not changing anything we're just changing the view of what we see uh, up and down not left and right so it's going to be view y view um, other things that I'm going to want to do is make sure that when bullets are outside of the room so here we said if y is larger than room height, destroy ourselves. Instead, what we're going to do is we're not going to do that. Um, instead, we're going to say, oh, if it's outside of the room, so if enemy bullet one is outside the room, then we're going to destroy ourselves. So I need to change those things. Uh, enemy bullet two, same thing. I need to change um, in here, in the step event, I don't want this. Uh, rather, I'm going to change the event and say, oh, is um, it outside of the room? And if it's outside the room, destroy myself. Uh, so a few subtle things like that I'm going to need to, to go and change. But the great thing is, uh, again, what I can do is I can make a room that's a lot of fun with different enemies. So first I'm going to see these enemies. Uh, next I'm going to see these enemies uh, and those enemies. And then finally... Uh, enemy three is going to be introduced um, with enemy two, um, and then I could even have a pattern of enemy twos. Maybe they're going to make a big V in a nice flying formation and so forth. Uh, so I'm going to need to adjust those. One last thing I need to do is the my plane is also going to need to keep up and have some throttle. <laughs> so what I need to do here is in the step event of the my plane, I need to also say um, jump to position, not y, but or not x rather, but y, two more relative. So it keeps going up the screen. Okay, so 